Hi everyone, my name is Jessica. Welcome back to my channel. Today we're working on block seven of the 2024 Scrappy Sampler. Let's get started. For block seven, we need to make flying geese and we're using the stitch and flip method. So I have um, two background squares and one print rectangle. I In this block, we're using a light green and a dark green. I have um, this as my dark green. And what we're going to do is just sew from the top corner to the bottom corner. To make our flying geese unit once we have one sewn on we just trim away and then uh, you can finger press this open or if you want to use an iron you can do that as well and then we're going to match up the second background square onto here and we're going to sew and we need to make eight of these four light green and four green and you make them all in exactly the same manner here's what one of my units looks like and then once I have, I have them all here ready so we can start assembly. Once you have your geese made, you can start assembly. I'm gonna change back to my quarter inch foot. When I need a quarter of an inch, I really love to use 57D. It's my favorite foot for piecing. So that's what I just put back on. And now we're going to make the flying geese pairs. So to do this, we're having a light one and a regular green like this. Um, I like to sew them this way, so I'm just turning it around. And you just sew along this edge with a quarter of an inch seam. Just to give you a tip about the, you know, the cutting off of the point that can happen, um, let me just show you here. So these two seam lines, this one here, and this one here. These are what we did, we made when we sewed the background squares on from one corner to the next. The point where those meet is the point of your flying geese unit. So when you sew across here to sew these two together with your quarter of an inch seam allowance, you should be just below this point like I am here. And what that means is when you open this, your point will not be cut off. If you go over this intersection, your point will be cut off. Uh, so that's just something to you know pay attention to when you're making these, that ideally, if the geese are made perfect, you won't have to think about it. That quarter of an inch will be there and it will just work out. Um, but you know, it is, geese are notoriously difficult. So if you're having a hard time when you're when you're coming across, my intersections like right in there, you can just kind of make sure that you're not above that intersection and then your point will not be cut off. And there you can see that that one looks good. So you're gonna make four of these flying geese pairs. So this block is kind of a play on a Dutchman's puzzle, which is one of my favorite blocks. The flying geese pairs are pointed in a certain direction for the Dutchman's puzzle, but actually we're going to turn them a different way and we're going to get a little bit of a different effect. So my top row is going to look like this and my bottom row is going to look like this. And we're going to get here um, this like fun diamond in the center here that's accented by our darker color. So um, just know that that is intentional. I didn't mean to make a Dutchman's puzzle and um, make a mistake. I wanted it to look like this. So then you're just going to sew the flying yeast pairs together as shown in the pattern. And once you have them sewn together one way, we have one final seam left right here. So now I'll sew that together. And you can decide um, which way you want to push these seams based on, you know, how your flying geese look the best. Usually if you push it one way, the flying geese won't look as nice as the other way. So just test that out. Um, again, what's really nice about this quilt is it doesn't really matter how the seams are pressed because each block is going to be framed in our setting and they don't interact with one another. So it's helpful because you can just push the seams whatever is the best way for the block. And here is what it looks like. So see we get this nice little um, diamond, it even kind of looks like a friendship star and then it's framed by the other flying geese. Now that wraps it up for block seven. So this is what it looks like. 
If you have any questions on making this block, just let me know and I'll be sure to help you out. And if not, I'll see you back here in a few days. So for the first week of this quilt along, we did a block a day. We started the day after Christmas and we went through today, New Year's Day. And now we're gonna slow the pace down a little bit to three blocks a week. So the next time I'll be catching up with you will be on January 4th. So on January 4th, blocks eight, nine, and 10, the patterns will be released on my blog and I'll do one video a day. So on the fourth, I'll release the eighth block, the fifth, I'll release the ninth, and the sixth, I'll release the 10th. And we'll continue like that for the duration of this quilt along. Thanks for following along.